Hi, everybody. It's Jay, and I am back in the booth with you for another sneak peek video preview for this week's new release here on Say With Jay. For our new release this week, we're going to have to jump into our time machine, and we are going to travel back, way back, all the way to the year of 2018. Ah, it was a simpler time then, but it was a time that was about to greatly improve because in the spring of that year, a bright, young, very talented, sweet romance author was about to have her very first novel published. That author was, of course, Jessie Gussman, and the book was Harvest Moon Homecoming. It was book number one in her Sweet Haven Farm series, and our new release this week is episode one of Harvest Moon Homecoming. Now, I've got more about the story and episode one and a preview for you in just a bit, but I wanted to share something else really quickly first. At the beginning of this year, you may recall that Jesse released a novella, There I Find Family, which tied up the Strawberry Sands Beach series, and we released it in two parts. Well, starting today, you can find those two parts combined into a single audiobook. You can find it in our new releases and Strawberry Sands Beach playlists. Now, not to worry, if you are still in the midst of either part one or part two, those videos will remain available, but we'll be taking them out of those two playlists, and you can find them under the videos tab on our YouTube page. Now, back to Harvest Moon Homecoming. Harvest Moon Homecoming is the story of Calvin Fink Finkenbinder. Fink, as he's known to his friends, is the principal of the local high school, and he's got a lot on his plate. For one, he is a candidate to become superintendent of the district. Also, um, when the story starts out, uh, we're a few days away from the town's National Farmers' Day parade, and Fink finds out that the school's entry in that parade, the float, has exploded. And he's got to come up with a replacement float in just a matter of days. But in and amongst all of this, he has a thorn in his side, and that thorn has a name, and that thorn is Ellie Bright. Ellie is the polar opposite of Fink's button-down, ordered, tightly wound personality. Mrs. Ellie Bright is a bit of a hot mess. Ellie, uh, who is the widow, uh, who is a who is a widow, uh, raising a daughter, is very different than Fink. She uh, lives flying by the seat of her pants. Just chaos surrounds her, and where she comes into Fink's field of vision is that every. Nearly every single day, she is late bringing her daughter to school. Very late. And the problem is, her daughter is a very bright student, uh, is in the running to be the class valedictorian. So Fink doesn't want to punish the daughter, um, but decides that he is going to take action to correct the behavior of Mrs. Bright. Well, little does he know that the plan that he devises is going to change more than just her behavior. It's going to change his life, too. Now, I don't want to say any more about the story, but I do have a preview of the first few minutes of episode one of Harvest Moon Homecoming. I hope you enjoy it. And then you'll come back this Friday for the full release of episode one 
Here, on Say With Jay. Fink vowed to stop the chaos. He glanced at the large Roman numeral clock on the wall of his office. With narrowed eyes, he turned back to stare out the big picture window overlooking the main entrance to the small Pennsylvania school. Monday morning, 8.43. Any minute now. He straightened his tie, then drummed his fingers on the desk. This had gone on long enough, and he was going to put a stop to it. Today. As if his determination had conjured it, the old blue Ford F-150 shot into view. Smoke billowed out of the tailpipe. The roar and rumble of the motor shook the window glass. No muffler. Rubber squealed and the passenger side wheels lifted from the pavement as the truck careened around the turn. The two heads inside the cab bobbled and jerked. As the truck slowed, the cloud of smoke engulfed it. It lurched to a stop with the front passenger tire on the sidewalk. Mr. Finkenbinder frowned and rubbed the side of his nose. He could never figure out whether Mrs. Bright parked that way on purpose or if it was truly an accident every time. He turned to the solid glass wall on his right. With all the privacy of a goldfish, Mr. Finkenbinder would never be accused of any impropriety. Three, two, one. Mrs. Bright barreled around the corner, her wild brown hair waving like Medusa's snakes, her hot pink pajama bottoms churning, her large orange t-shirt rippling like a flag in the wind, her muck boots clomping against the freshly waxed floor. Hurry up, Harper, we're late. The frightful woman turned to her daughter, who trailed behind her, unfazed. A small pang of envy zipped through his chest. How did such a crazy, irresponsible woman have such an organized, obedient daughter? And why, in the name of all that was holy, did the nephew who had been dropped on his doorstep this fall have to be more like Mrs. Bright than her daughter? Crap, I forgot paper for a note. Mrs. Bright stopped and slapped her forehead. Harper tapped her mother's shoulder and handed her the sheet she carried on top of her neatly stacked books. Oh, you're so wonderful, Harper. Thanks, she gushed, as if Harper didn't do that every Monday morning. Jordan Swoop raced by the window, screeched to a stop, backed up, and tapped Mr. Finkenbinder's window. Are you lifting tonight, Mr. F.? He gave the kid a small smile and nodded. Jordan's grades had been high enough to keep him eligible for sports since last winter, but he was still holding Mr. Finkenbinder to the deal they'd made. Mr. Finkenbinder would help him with his academics, and Jordan would be his lifting partner. Jordan gave a thumbs up and hustled away. Mr. Finkenbinder had lost sight of Mrs. Bright and her daughter as they entered the office blocked by one of the non-glass walls. But when they stepped up to the counter in the office, he could again see the odd pair through the window in his door. His nostrils flared and his smile disappeared. He reached for the intercom on his desk and depressed the button. Mrs. Herschel? Yes, Mr. Finkenbinder. Once you have authorized the late excuse and administered the tardy notice, would you please send Mrs. Bright into my office? He looked down, adjusting the single sheet of paper on his pristine desk, but out of his peripheral vision, he sensed Mrs. Bright turn and stare straight at him. His big wall clock ticked seven times before he lifted his eyes and met hers, which were a startling blue. She spun around. I don't have time to meet with that pompous donkey today. Because his door was cracked and her voice was raised, he heard her quite plainly. He could have yelled out the door to Mrs. Herschel, 
Some might say he should have, since this was a small country school with none of the metal detectors, door locks, and ID cards that other, larger schools had acquired in the last decade. The atmosphere of the school was casual. Mr. Finkenbinder didn't do casual. He depressed the button of the intercom again. Mrs. Herschel? Yes, Mr. Finkenbinder? If Mrs. Bright should find her schedule too full to grace me with her presence in my office, Mr. Finkenbinder could hardly believe he'd used Mrs. Bright's name and Grace in the same sentence, but there it was. English was a complicated language. You may dismiss her and assign her daughter to room one for two hours of after-school detention. Yes, Mr. Finkenbinder. This time, Mrs. Bright whipped around and yanked open his door. It banged against the doorstop and lurched back, smacking her in the temple. She tended to lead with her head, as if she had horns. She swore, at him or the door, maybe both. He did not look up, using the pencil in his hand to make a short remark about nothing on the paper in front of him noting the scent of fresh pine filling his office. Ten ticks of the clock. He glanced up. Oh, Mrs. Bright, why, you found time in your schedule to see me after all? How nice. Do come in. Hi, this is Jay, and thanks for listening. If you're ready for another great audiobook, Here's one we think you might like. Or check out the playlist with all our latest releases. Don't forget to subscribe to Say With Jay, give this video a thumbs up, and tell us what you liked in the comments.